Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a system. You can call it a logarithmic system or whatever you want, but we have logs and then we have a product. So we have x, y equals 10 and log x minus log y equals 2. A lot of times people are confused when I say log log without a base. When I don't mention the base, it's base 10. So log x means log x with base 10 and the same thing goes for log y okay so let's go ahead and solve the system in a couple different ways we could probably present two solutions here let's start with the first method so for my first method i'm going to do the following i'm going to go ahead and and i believe we can do more than uh, two methods but anyways first method can be to condense this expression into a single one so how can i write log x minus log y I can write it as log x over y. I have to be careful x and y both have to be positive because of the domain. And that equals 2. And then I can use the definition. Remember what I told you. Base is 10. So you can go ahead and put a little invisible 10 there. Right? That's invisible. You don't see it. And then use the definition of logarithms. What does the definition say? It says 10 to the power 2 equals x over y. That's what logs are. That's how logs work. So from here we can get x over y equals 10 squared, which is 100. So x over y equals 100, and we also know x, y is equal to 10. So what can I do with these things, right? I can go ahead and multiply them. I can also substitute, but, you know, it's the same thing pretty much, right? So I can go ahead and multiply x over y times x, y. The y cancels out, giving us x squared, but 100 times 10 is 1,000. So x is equal to the square root of 1,000 plus minus, but remember, x cannot be negative, so we have to take the positive solution. x equals the square root of 1,000. Since 1,000 is 100 times 10, we could also write this as 10 times the square root of 10. All right? So that is the x value, and we get a single value from here because x and y have to be positive. Now from here we can find y by using one of the equations. Suppose you use the second one, x, y equals 10, replace x with 10 root 10 times y equals 10. You can cross out the tens, divide by 10 both sides, and you get 1. So from here y equals 1 over square root of 10, which you can rationalize and get square root of 10 divided by 10 and x was 10 times the square root of 10 so we can kind of put these two together okay one of them is 10 times the square root of 10 the other one is one tenth of square root of 10 of course they're going to contain a lot of tens because we're dealing with base 10 here okay so that's basically the first method and let's go ahead and take a look at the second method and I'm going to rewrite the system. For my second method, let's rewrite the original problem. x, y is 10 and log x minus log y is 2. Okay, what am I going to do for my second method? I'm going to go ahead and log the first equation. Why? Because logging x, y is going to turn it into a sum of two logs and we have the difference. So we can build a really nice system that can be eliminated, right? So if you log x, y, since x, y is equal to 10, log x, y is going to be the same as log 10. But log 10 is in base 10, so that's going to be 1. Because log b with base b is always 1. Of course, b has to be positive and b cannot be 1. Okay, under those conditions, it is 1. So now this gives us something nice because I now know that log x, y equals 1. But... I'm going to expand it, right? Log x plus log y equals 1. And we already know that log x minus log y equals 2. So that's nice. Now we can go ahead and add these two equations up and eliminate log y. And from here we get 2 log x equals 1 plus 2, which is 3. And log x becomes 3 over 2. Awesome. This is definitely a totally different approach, you know, because we're not really getting anything that we got before. So anyways, this is a 10. 
So by using the definition, and you can always write it if you want, 10 to the power 3 halves is going to be x. So let's write it as an exponential. x equals 10 to the power 3 halves. Nice. But not that nice. So let's go ahead and break it down a little bit. If you are familiar with rational exponents, you probably know that a to the power m over n is the nth root of a to the m. Under certain conditions, you know, if n is even, a should not be negative, if, you know, so on and so forth. Under those conditions, under certain conditions, you can write this. Or if you don't want to do that, you can break down the 3 halves into 1 plus 1 half. And then that is going to become 10 times 10 to the power 1 half. And hopefully you do know that 10 to the power 1 half is equal to square root of 10. The reason being, if you multiply 10 to the power 1 half by itself, you get 10 to the power 1 from the sum of exponents. And that happens to be 10. So what multiply by itself gives you 10. And that needs to be a positive number. And the answer is square root of 10. So x becomes 10 root 10. And by substitution, you can get the y value. But to substitute, again, you can use any of these equations. If you want to use log x plus log y equals 1, that's fine. You just got to find log x. But log x, you already know. It's 3 halves. You don't have to reinvent the wheel, right? Okay. It's been reinvented. I mean, it's been invented already. So from here, you get 3 halves is, uh, plus log y is 1. But uh-oh, log y becomes negative from here. That's okay. Log, something can be negative, but we don't want uh, y to be negative. Okay, that there's a distinction, hopefully. And this is going to become 10 to the power negative 1 half, which can be written as 1 over 10 to the power 1 half. We used the negative exponent rule. Let me rewrite it, or let me write it for you. a to the power negative n means 1 over a to the power n, as long as a does not equal 0. Okay? So that's the meaning of the negative exponent. And remember, 10 to the power 1 half, we already talked about it. It means 1 over square root of 10. And again, that can be written as square root of 10 over 10. Make sense? Okay. So we got x equals root 10 as before. I mean, 10 root 10 as before. I'm sorry. And y as square root of 10 over 10. And basically, this gives us the exact same solutions that we got before. So let me kind of recap what, what I did for the second method here real quick. For my second method, I logged both sides of the first equation and that way I got the sum of two logs, but I already had the difference. That way I got a real simple system and I found the values of log x and log y. From there, by using the definition and of course some rational exponents, the radicals and so on and so forth, I got the answer for x and y. For my first method though, I did it slightly differently because I condensed. So for the second method, we kind of expanded. For the first, we used the condensing formula for logarithms. And this brings us to the end of the notes. As you can see, the white pages start. And to the end of this video, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.